Okay, let's get started. Very heartfelt welcome tonight. I'm happy that you all took the time out of the day to come here. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to meet you all. It's a pleasure to talk a little bit about uh, about myself and what I do and a little bit about why some people get sick and others don't because I have my own idea about that. And I want to warn you, some of it is funny. So you're allowed <laughs> to interrupt me, you're allowed to laugh, you're allowed to ask questions, comments, whatever you want. I'm just a normal person. There's some food that I made. Feel free to have some. I made some bread. It's 100% real whole wheat bread like it was 150 years ago. It's very tasty. I have some butter and jam, homemade jam put on it. I have brownies that don't seem like what they are, but they're gluten free. I have chocolate crackles. They get your dirty fingers, but they're tasty. Yeah. So try them, enjoy them whenever you feel like there's coffee, tea, water, whatever you want. Because it's delicious. And I made it all because I like to cook. That's one of the things. Yeah. And my dear husband, he always tells me, well, he keeps me down there. <laughs> That's a nice guy. All right, let's get started. And today, besides why some people get sick and others don't, uh, let's see if the computer does what I want. Oh no. <laughs> you will also discover who is that Dr. Christine here, or Christine, or Dr. Christine, and what will be coming to this location here in Spring Garden Road because I'm very pleased to offer a few cooking classes and a few presentations to hopefully interesting topics. And I give you a few tips for brain health because that's one of my interests and specialties. Okay, I can use a computer like that. Let's get started with who I really am because you know, don't know me. I know myself sometimes don't, I don't know myself sometimes. And <laughs> so a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Germany. Uh, I'm the baby, it was 1961. <laughs> my dear mother, a teacher, my father, physicist, and this is my brother, who ended up a computer scientist. He's three years older than me. So I was raised in a very scientific household. And at four years of age, I decided I wanted to be a physician and help people. So, when I grew up, I went to medical school, I became a physician, I got married early, had two sons, and then I, uh, we, I we built a house in Germany with a family practice. And there it is. In the winter, fine, young man, have a seat, take a seat. Thank you. That was our house in Germany, and our family practice was in the barn. My ex husband, he was an excellent physician, and we did everything in that practice. We saw patients, of course, we did ultrasound, we did EKGs, we did stress tests, we did blood work, we did urinalysis, we did house calls, we did emergency cruises, we did small surgery. And he even did hypnotherapy, and we both were naturopaths at the same time. In Germany, you can be both. And we lived on top. So when somebody in the village where we lived was sick at night, he rang the bell, I put on my robe, down we went and treated. And when somebody came at Christmas, and we were on duty, which was every second Christmas, with a gal colleague, we did a quick ultrasound to confirm hooked on an IV, gave them what they needed, and they left happy and pain-free and went home and hopefully didn't fight too much with their relatives. <laughs> but God colleagues and nervous breakdowns, that's what we saw at Christmas time, <laughs> Boxing Day. Yeah, that's something else. So, I had eventually a few, it doesn't look good, it's my German paperwork, I still have a German license, I have a doctorate, so it's like a PhD. In Germany, you don't get your doctorate. When you graduate as a doctor, like here, they get the MD, 
in Germany you don't. You have to write a dissertation, like a half year or a year of research, and then you get your doctor made, your medical doctor. <laughs> so I have that. I have a few other certificates. I became a dermatologist, allergist, naturopath, did leg veins. I then opened my own dermatology practice in Germany, about half hour from my ex-husband in a, a little larger city about the size of Halifax. And I founded that, and in two years it goes to a four to eight employees, and we saw 120 patients a day. That's what I worked for dermatologists. It is five minute medicine, but we had eight, eight employees, so they helped with the UV treatments, with the allergy tests, with the surgeries, with the pathology, with the biotherapy, because we did Dead Sea baths with consecutive. A, uh, UV treatment for psoriasis and atopic dermatitis, and that was great. We were the only people in the village that did in the in that city that did that. And it was a lot of fun, but <coughs> I worked about 14 to 16 hour a day in my office. And then I went home just to participate in my ex-husband's family practice, participate in night shifts. And in uh, emergency duty, whatever, we were the first on scene, often in accidents, because the ambulance took longer than us to respond. We had a big highway in the back, and at night, people tended to get off the road safely and drive around the tree. I must say, I learned a lot. I learned a lot, and I saw things that are not very pleasant to see when you search in the middle of the night. And you don't know if the mother that just passed away because she went to the tree had a child in the car or not because it was a car seat. So the firefighters or the ambulance said we researched the woods. Thankfully, the kid was safe at home. But sadly, it was an orphan kid. So we saw a lot of heart attacks and all those things and treated them, put them in the hospital if needed. And it was very rewarding. It was, it is nice to do house calls and see all the people where they live and uh, stay with them as a family doctor until they pass away, basically. And that was very rewarding. Now, but on the other hand, it was too much for myself because I was working, working, working. I had no time to look after myself. So something had to give. So one day, I sat down in my office chair. I had a pain in my back. So I said to myself, hey, Christine, you're one of the 80% of people that have back pain. Continue to work. That evening, I could hardly stand straight. And the patient said, maybe you should see a doctor, <laughs> which is always weird to hear. <laughs> so after <coughs> seven, from 8 o'clock, I finished working. I couldn't tie my shoelaces. I made it to the car. I made it home, went to bed. In the morning, I couldn't get up. My husband, ex-husband, family doctor, called his ambulance friends. And they carried me down the steps and in the hospital. Then I learned to walk again in the next four weeks. Then I went to a rehab program. I had a slip disc. So I did what I could, lost weight, exercises, it got a little bit better. I started working again. But whoop, second disc slipped. And that time I gave up. I sold my office and I fell into a depression. Now, that's how I got into the tunnel. And I was definitely in the dark part. And to understand the tunnel analogy for those that haven't been in Europe in the mountains, there are mile long tunnels. And when you get in the tunnel, it's completely dark. You can't see at the end. And you're just in the dark. And then a sudden turn, and the sudden sunlight brightens your spirit. That's the image I have in the light at the end of the tunnel. So at that point, my disc was bad, I got depressed. My office was gone, and on top of all of that, my ex-husband decided to commit suicide. <gasps> so I was left with two teenage sons, a bad dad, and immigration papers to Canada. 
You see, four years before, we started the immigration procedures. We actually bought a piece of property down in Lippi that we had to do at that time because we didn't want our sons to have to serve in the then compulsory German army. So I came to Halifax. That was 21 years ago. Best decision ever in my life. But at that time, it made things worse. Because I didn't know anybody. I had no contacts. I had two teenage sons that were not supportive. They were spoiled rotten. They're good guys now. And I was really depressed. I didn't know what to do. I just hung around. And one day, I got in my van. I had a burgundy Dodge van. And I drove from Bayer's Lake to Halifax. And I took off my seatbelt, pushed down the gas pedal, and picked a pillar on the right side of the highway, you might know which one I mean, that is sturdy enough to hold up to a deadly collision. I wanted to commit suicide. In the middle of that, a little voice in my gut said, you don't want to die, you need help. So I did what was the hardest thing I ever did. I drove myself to the Kiwi Kiwi yard and asked for help. Excuse and, me, Crystal. Yes. I'm going to open the door. It's warm in here, guys. This is this this is if you can hold that, let, let us know. I tried to put the hands on. They weren't working. I think it's fine now. Just yeah. a little bit. I hope. Yeah. Very good. And that lights. Uh, uh, I am uh, not this one. Maxine, ah, yeah, fresh, Maxine fresh put face. the lights on. Are you fine with lights? Yeah. Oh, the lights are better on. Oh, I have a fan to go on. Yeah, so we will we'll just see the light with uh, Christmas. That I have so the end of the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming, not yet. Yeah. Yes. So I walk myself to the emergency room. And I was lucky because the resident on duty realized how bad I was and admitted me to the Abbey Lane, a mental hospital for those who don't know. And I stayed there for four weeks, listening to John Denver music and waiting for the medication to kick in. And I must say, it's a very humbling experience for a former physician to be an inpatient, not just in a physical hospital, but in a mental hospital. I learned a lot, and it was good. And after four weeks, I was ready to struggle on on my own, and they transitioned me, thankfully, to the six-week stay hospital program, excellent program, and I learned the meaning of the word assertiveness. The funny thing is, in German, it doesn't exist. You are either a doormat, submissive, or you are aggressive. So I was a doormat. My children and my husband treated me well, I, like I was nothing. So I learned assertiveness, good thing to do. And then six months later, I met my now husband, a sweetheart called Mike. I'm still with him, and he's from Halifax. So at this point, I was still struggling. My back was bad, my mental health was not good. But I wanted to connect to the medical community, and I took the exams that they wanted me to take. Hey, I passed those. I have a nice certificate from the Medical Council of Canada. But that doesn't give you a license. And then they told me, you have to do a four year residency. We won't recognize you from Germany. So at that point, I was too sick. My back was not good enough. I couldn't work, especially not as a resident. So I did something else. I studied the things that you could do privately and became a nutritionist, a gastrointestinal disease specialist, and a certified brain health coach with Dr. Daniel Amen, who has clinics in New York and uh, Los Angeles and all over the States. He's another board certified psychiatrist in the grade five. So that was very interesting and I became a specialist for brain and mental health. That works well with my history. 
I was very interested in that. But I struggled for about 10 years more until I finally made the decision, the decision to apply everything that I knew would work to myself. Because we know a lot of things, but we don't do them. And I didn't. And so I saw the light of the tunnel. And this is my husband, and I'm now in the little, little circle with a nice bed there where we have chickens. Laying hands, I have a few fresh eggs for those who are interested. I love gardening, I love cooking. As you see, I bought a few samples. And I love my husband and I love dogs. We just have a new puppy. This is Rudy. I took that picture yesterday. Isn't he cute? Nine weeks old. That's a little Pomeranian puppy. Unusual color, but he's a sweet term. He's a puppy, so. Well, a little bit. <laughs> so by now, I'm at the other side of the tunnel. The sun turns and subsided. And I'm happy to help people with their help. And I'm very happy that the management of this building allowed me, Maria as a sweetheart, to use this room to help people understand a little about the health, have fun in the process, and ask Elvi any question that you want, because that's my tenant, ask Dr. Christina. I always wanted to help people. I'm a scientist. I want to research. I want to learn. I'm a lifelong learner. I want to help people help themselves, take charge of their health. I always tell my clients, you are the expert for your body. I can be a consultant. I'm not telling you what to do. You probably know that because Mr. Gu is there. They know everything. I call him Mr. Gu. He's a know it all. <laughs> I'd like to I'm just like it's just a quick question. When did your back get better or is it better now? Yes, it is. My back went better. I went to the pain clinic for 10 years, got twice a year epidural steroids. I took morphine. I took codeine. I took time, of course. I was 315 pounds at some point. I had gastric bypass surgery in 2006. In, in India. In India, but all places. Yes, it was a good decision. I lost 150 pounds. That was 2006. But I kept it up. And that's the achievement because it's just a tool. It's not a solution. As some people think it's an easy way out. No, it isn't. It's an easy way out at first, but after two years, you can gain it all back if you haven't changed your lifestyle. And my back got better after I found the right chiropractor that made a big difference. I tried chiropractors before, some made it worse. And I found a lady, and now I go to her successor because she moved to Fall River, so it's a little too far. And they keep my back in order. And I do Tai Chi. I do Taoist Tai Chi with the Taoist Tai Chi Society. I'm just becoming a beginner's instructor, I just became it. So I might offer some Tai Chi classes here that interest a lot. And uh, that is exercise for the mind, for the body, for the spirit. It's meditation. And it is actually hard work physically and really good for balance, neuroplasticity. I can talk for hours about just Tai Chi because I'm happy to do it. And that together is my back always good. I'm not taking any painkillers anymore. I don't need them. I had a relapse of my back pain about four weeks ago because I sat for a whole day in my office Doing work, I was so engrossed in the work, I forgot all about my back. And when it got sore, I didn't think twice about it. And my chiropractor, the right exercises, of course, I did physio. Physio didn't help. Weight loss didn't help, by the way. <laughs> my back didn't get better from just losing weight. You always get told, oh, you're too big. When you lose weight, your back is better. It's not true. That alone, does get the back better. I always say health is a team effort. 
every the right team has to come together with you as a boss, then it will work. And it's never too late to, to make your back better. And even if you have a relapse, well, you have a relapse, work on it, and it gets good. My back is good again, I can do anything. I can lift whatever I want, and I take supplements. And I can share this. The official psychiatric diagnosis that I got slapped on, which you would never think of, is schizoaffective disorder depressive type. So by uh, hospital records, <laughs> I'm schizophrenic and depressed. Okay, now my psychiatrist, I'm with him for over 20 years, he's a good guy. He looked at me about four years ago and said, Christine, with your diagnosis, you shouldn't be that well. <laughs> I said, a good laugh. He said, what are you doing? So I told him, and he actually told me that he would love to be a life coach, but the system doesn't allow for it. That's not really right for me. <laughs> but I'm happy because I'm feeling good. Now let me tell you a little bit about what I would like to share with you in future presentation before we get into the meat of everything. And I have the shape of it. There is a speaker in body. And you can follow me along. You can follow me along, and then I read it. You can do that now, and you can do that that way. Now, I didn't map out it for very long, just to generate. And I plan on offer monthly presentations and every two weeks a cooking class. A cooking demo with a class where we talk about food, talk about nutrition, talk about cooking, and you all can put hands on it and cook with me. Now, what's coming up? Next one, October 6th. Hey, I'll show you how to bake my bread. You can taste today, and you would be surprised how easy it is, because I don't make it the hard way. I make it the easy way. The book where I got it from, Peter Reinhardt's Home Meat Baking, great book, <laughs> I've modified it, because I'm a lazy person. I want to do it the easy way. So I changed the recipe, and that's the result. It is tasty, it's good for you, and it's really easy to make. It doesn't take much time. Right. You have to taste it. You have to try it. Absolutely. You it's have to nice. try it. I, I make nice. little loaves, so each of you can try a little bit. If, if you already had supper, mm. it's trial portions, mm. not really feeding portions. Because I want you to try it. And if you want, if you like it, and you want to make it, I'll show you in two weeks. I think it's two weeks or so. Now, a week later, because of the time that I'm busy, uh, we'll have another hands-on cooking demo, and I'll show you how to make the brownies. And there's a secret. Those are black bean brownies. There's no flour in them. And you would not know it. I didn't tell my husband. He tried them. Oh, he said, they're good. Then I said, those are black bean brownies. Oh, really, he said? <laughs> you wouldn't know it. Try them. And then I'll do a presentation about how to eat for vibrant health and energy. I wrote a book about it because I'm so passionate about it. And I'll tell you a little bit about what really is food and what isn't food. Because we get often told things that may not be completely true because it is in the interest of the food industry to keep us stupid. And about ingredients, how to read a label. How to buy good food? What about animals? Some people choose to be vegans because they don't want to kill animals. So we'll talk about that. And what really does organic, bio-organic meat? What's the difference between free-range eggs and chickens, pastured eggs, and regular chickens and eggs? So we'll talk about all that. And there's a lot to it. You won't be surprised. I hope you will. It's my fun. <laughs> Then on October 27th, another cooking. I'll show you how to make my bone broth in the slow cooker. And it's so easy. 
who don't need nothing much. Just a slow cooker, a purpose, some water, and a little ingredients. It's easy to make. And it's a great basis for all kinds of soup. We'll talk about the benefits of bone broth <coughs> and what you can do with it. For example, make a soup that I will be talking about on November 10th. That's my simple, I call it simple vegetable soup. Because I use bone broth and I just throw all the vegetables in, boil it, oh my god, it's so good. And then in the evening we'll talk about the true water causes of the obesity epidemic. Because it's not that people don't have the discipline to eat better and exercise more. That's not the cause. And it's not your fault if you're obese. And I'll tell you why. And what really is it? Why it is important to address it? And what really started that obesity epidemic? Because a hundred years ago, obesity was rare. And it's not our fault. And by willpower, it's not the solution. It is not. It doesn't work. And what is? And all about diets. It's interesting, the original word diet stems from the Greek dietas. It means the way you live your life. That's what we know. What about exercise? Is it important for weight loss? And what, where, when, and how to eat? There's more to it than eating three meals a day and two snacks. That may not be the best option. And the end of the low fat craze, of course. And everybody knows it now, even the mainstream dietitians. Now then we talk about on November 24th, that will be fun, easy homemade mayonnaise. You would be surprised how easy it is to make your own tasty mayonnaise in about 30 seconds. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and it's delicious. And we'll make some ketchup. And I'll show you what I do with garlic. So it lasts forever. And you can just put a little thing in the fridge. Take a spoonful. You don't have to chop little cloves every time you want to cook because it takes a lot of time. It's nice when you see them on food TV, the chefs. Doing this and this and this and this and they have these all case, all those little bowls. Oh my god, that's that's terrible. I'm lazy, I don't want that. I want to make food fast and it has to be good food. So I'll show you how. The Dr. Sinve, how I cut onions is probably different from what chefs do. Maybe I'm not as fast, I'm very much not as good. <laughs> But I use a sharp knife. <laughs> now, on December 8th, which will be the last one before Christmas, we will talk about healthy desserts and snacks. And we are showing you how to make those chocolate pie out there. Mm -hmm, they're good. And we'll make a few healthier Christmas cookies. Mm. And for all cooking classes, whatever I teach, there will be a recipe handout. So they're not all. And in the evening, we talk about how to deal with stress over the holidays. Because some people might go or see relatives that I haven't talked to all year. There's conflict in the air. Some people are stressed out over making the food and the turkey with all the dressing. How to deal with stress in a positive way? Because we all have stress and we need stress. Stress is part of life. Without stress, we die. We need some stress. And we can deal with stress in a positive way. That will be fun. And then on December 29th, in time for the new year, I'll show you how to easily make some egg salad and what kind of dressings you can easily make yourself. Keep them in the fridge and just use them whenever you want to. So you don't have to mix it all the time. And they are just as good or better than what you can buy and cheaper too. <coughs> In January, I was planning on showing you the avocado chocolate pudding. Oh my god, it is good. And I'll show you that you can freeze avocados so you can buy them on sale. They don't get brown and you can use them whenever you want. They get a little mushy when you unthaw them, but they're ideal for the avocado chocolate pudding. And many people are constipated. So we'll talk a little bit about that and how to relieve it naturally. Because you can make your own I wouldn't call it laxative, but release agent. <laughs> and then in the evening, 
here talk about the aliens inside us. Now, it's not the little heads that come pop out of your body like in a movie, for heaven's sake. But how your gut can help you or make you sick. But I thought it sounds better than gut health. Sounds a little boring, but the aliens inside us won't be boring. So we'll take a look inside our body and talk about some issues that we don't talk about that often. I won't name names yet. <laughs> and on January 26th, it's nice winter, and we're roast some old vegetables. Oh, they're so tasty, and you can make them really easy. I'll show you how. I put them in less than half an hour. No, I take about 10 minutes to cut them, put them in the bowl, mix them, put them in the oven, and forget about them until the alarm goes off. <coughs> And now, I'll ask you to please, if you're interested in topics, health topics, to talk about, I can talk about pretty much anything I have fun with it, you're interested in, and if you're interested in specific recipes, or want to learn how to cook other stuff the easy way, and even in an apartment you can easily cook, it's fun. Write it on your feedback sheet, there's pens in the back, I should give them from Yes, I am for Just write down what you're interested in. I'm curious to hear. No. Did you get the feedback sheets? No, they're here. Because I really want to hear from everybody, but not everybody wants to say it loud what they're really interested in. But I'll be happy to address it. Anyway, and I won't tell. Who said it? <laughs> okay, yes. Will you be talk, uh, talking on the chemicals of food now and what students might be discussing that? I would be happy to discuss that. If you tell me what chemicals you are most interested in, we talk about the basics on mm -hmm. the 13th of October. The mm -hmm. nitrates and all those. Absolutely. I now actually teach you the nitric oxide dump and the positive effect of nitric oxide on our arteries, artery brain. That's a good thing. And MSG and all that. Hmm? MSG and all that. MSG, food additives, we'll talk about that. It's actually part of the presentation on the 13th. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a little book that has most of it in it. And we'll talk about that on the 13th. 13th of October. Not long, long to go. And I hope you all can make it because it will be really interesting and fun. I might even have my brain by then. I mean, brain off. Brain off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. My brain is, yeah. Okay, now let's go to the main part to the meat. Why some people get sick and others don't. Now that is really funny, but it's true. It's really true. Because we all know people that get sick as children, have a chronic illness, and we know others that smoke and dope and are 100 years old and still healthy. Now, I have my theory why that is, and I know many people say it's in the genes. And, but first we have to talk about what really a chronic disease is. I mean, acute disease, illness, we all know that. We have a cold, it heals. We have, we break an arm, we go to the emergency room, we fix it. Conventional medicine is excellent in fixing acute illnesses. They still are not as good in really helping chronic illnesses. They maintain them, but they really often don't heal them. So chronic diseases, of our civilized world are fatigued. Many people have brain fog. There's a lot of food allergies that were not there 50 years ago. Autoimmune diseases, skin problems. Even kids have allergies, eczema. Yes, there was kids 100 years ago that had that, but may not so many. Autism, ADHD. There were a few kids like that years ago. And now it's 20%. What's the cause? Memory problem. We all expect more or less when you get old that you get Alzheimer's. It doesn't have to be. There are ways to reduce the risk, even if you have the genes for it. 
And I won't say you can avoid it in any, every case. You can. But you can reduce your risk enormously. Oops. That goes too fast. Too bad. Mental health problems are exploding, especially in our children. Chronic pain, who doesn't have it? Leaky gut is a flashy word. Inflammation is rampant. Many people have Crohn's, inflammatory bowel disease. So what's all behind it? We'll get to that. And Dr. Derbert is in, that's an old, Dr. Derbert is in one of my mentors who wrote The End of Alzheimer's. Says most chronic illnesses have either one of those at the, at the root, either inflammation, which can be caused by a host of other things, <coughs> toxins. Now think about it. 100 years ago, 150 years ago, environmental toxins were low. We just started industrialism. In the last 100 years, we added about 80,000 chemicals to our food chain. Very few of them have been tested, and those who have been tested have been tested by themselves. We get the toxic soup. We are the guinea pigs. Oops. Come on, this stupid computer. How do I? And nutrient deficiencies. And you would think we have enough to eat. How does that come about? I'll explain that on the 13th in detail. Because even if you're obese, you can be nutrient deficient. Now we go to this. People always think it may be the genes. But it is genes or environment. Because the genes don't change in a hundred years. Genes take thousands of years to change and mutate. It's not the genes by themselves. Some people have a genetic disposition. And my theory, how I picture it, <laughs> is that we all are born with the barrel of different size. So there's your genes. Some people have a small barrel. Some people are born with a really large barrel. And every barrel has a spout of different size. Now the big barrel can have a small spout or a long spout, and the little barrel can have a big spout. And for that, emphasizes the spouts. They stand for the detoxification system of our bodies, the liver, the gut, the kidney, the skin, the lungs. They get all the toxins out naturally if it functions. And now it rains in those barrels. And we'll talk about in the next slide what the rain is. Those are the environmental influences. And once the barrel is full, we'll see what happens then. Now, what is filling the barrels? What's the rain? The rain can be environmental toxin, malabsorption, inflammation, not enough exercise, stress, relationship problems, toxic thoughts, gut microbiome, what we call dysbiosis, which is similar to malabsorption, hormonal imbalances, chemical imbalances, nutrient deficiencies, infections, parasites, more common than you think, smoking, drug abuse, marijuana, whatever, medications. They all can fill our barrel. And what happens when the barrel is full? We get symptoms. Suddenly, and it can have built over 30, 40 years, we start getting memory problems. We start getting brain fog. We start getting tired. We start getting what they label as fibromyalgia. That's when the barrel overflows. Sometimes there's a traumatic event that pokes a hole in the back. Then it overflows early. And what does conventional medicine mostly do? Medications, they mop up the spill. So the barrel still overflows, overflows. We just treat the symptoms. They treat the symptoms, exactly. Often. Yes. Oh, you can. No, here. Okay, here. No, not for incidentally, yeah. the most assisted mind is covered with my own. Yeah. It, it can be very painful. Sure. Yes. Must and I won't minimize the pain. Mm -hmm. They have real pain. It's not in the head. They have real pain. <clears throat> now, when you look at that, when somebody has a small barrel and a lot of pain, 
in the small sum, they get sick as children. Their genetic disposition plus the environment get them sick. Now somebody else is born with a real big barrel and a big skull, very well functioning detoxification. He can drink, smoke, eat whatever they want. They'll be 100 years old and healthy. So yes, the genetic disposition plays a role, but not by itself. Years ago, there was very less rain. So the children didn't get as sick, even if they had a small barrel. Yes, so Christine, what you're saying is these barrels represent genetic disposition right. in each person. Right. right. And then all of these other things that come in to fill the barrel will determine, depending upon your genetic disposition, how quickly they get sick right. or how yeah. quickly you get sick at all. And that's right. caused by some people get sick early and some people get sick late. Or not at all. And have the same environment. It is a combination, they call it epigenetics. The gene expression changes with the environment. It's not the genes itself that change. It's the gene expression, the way we activate our genes. And that's quite interesting because food, for example, junk food, can activate a gene that makes us sicker. It's interesting. It really is, and we'll talk a little bit more. In my opinion, what we need to do is first really assess what's going on, get to the root cause. And many doctors, I won't generalize, there are excellent doctors out there, and they just have, don't have the time to properly assess a person and how to know. They ask you one or two questions and then jump to the medications. That's what they tend to do most of them. I won't generalize. I really respect our doctors. They all try their best. Really, most of them do. There's a few that are upside down. What about psychosomosis? Hmm? Psychosomatic. No. Psychosomatic illnesses. That's when somebody has toxic thoughts, they go down. Absolutely, they are there. And there is people that have so many toxic thoughts that they get the pain from them. But they really feel the pain. It's not that they don't. And they have to be addressed properly. And all it needs is a proper assessment. What's the root cause? Is it a toxic thought? Is it the lead toxicity from lead pipes in their childhood? Uh, is it an infection, maybe in the brain, the Prep6 virus, which you don't test for? What's going on? We want to know. And then we can start to intervene. And we're really good as that as physicians. Drugs, surgery, there's other interventions too. But that's the most popular ones. But what about eating right? For your type, it's individually different. Everybody eats what's good for them. And the lifestyle is important. If you sit on your chest and you're watching TV all day, you have a higher likelihood of getting sick because you don't move your body. I always say you have to move all three Bs. Your body, your brain, and your bowels. <laughs> <laughs> All three bees. And you know what my mother used to say? Keep your bowels well open and your big mouth shut. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that something. Yeah, I don't know how this. But then, what's often forgotten is once we achieve better health, we need to work on it to maintain it because in our modern world, it's hard. And sometimes you need a coach. And that's why people that that lose weight, they gain it all back. There's nobody to help them in the maintenance or mentoring phase, to help them get back on the bandwagon after they fell off. Everybody falls off sometimes. Everybody starts, well, we go to a birthday party. What's their birthday cake? Ah, oh, I want a piece. Yeah, have a piece. I always say, if you choose to eat junk, enjoy it. Why not? I mean, at least enjoy it. Don't feel guilty for it. It makes it worse. It actually does. It's interesting how much uh, I say a lot interesting because I'm interested in pretty much anything. I have a question. Not sure. sure. It's, but those three barrels that you're yeah. going into, you're going into. What if what happens when you have a good barrel, but you're brought up in a toxic situation? Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
writing it can be just too much. And there's two things you can do. Reduce the writing, the toxic situation, get out of it as much as you can. But not as a child you can. As a child you can, but you can later. It's not your fate, you can help yourself. It's never too late. Yes, it may be work, it will be work. When you grow up in a toxic environment, it will be work. But it's never too late. And yes, the detoxification system has to be worked on. <clears throat> if it doesn't, if you have a lot of pain, you want to get rid of it, you have to work on it. And certain things keep them closed. Now, as a brain health coach and a mental health coach, of course, I have to at least give you a few tips for brain health before I close. So I will, and I have a worksheet for that too, so you don't have to write it down. Because if you want a healthy brain for life, and who doesn't, <laughs> you have to do more things that help your brain and less things that hurt your brain. It's very simple. And Dr. Amen said that, and I love him for that. He's really good. He said, eat better, which means more vegetables, healthy fat, we talk about that all on the 13, good protein and low sugar foods. So some exercise, like brain healthy exercises, and we talk about that, and exercises that maybe don't put you at risk for a head injury. I personally think ultimate fighting and uh, boxing is not exercise or sports. It is it is voluntary hurting each other, causing injury with consent. I don't like it, but no, it's considered a sport. I won't talk about hockey and the many concussions. It's a national sport in Canada. It would be better to play table tennis instead. Hard, hard to get around. Add the right supplements if necessary. If you have a nutrient deficiency, which many of us have and don't know it, we'll talk about that too. Work on your mental fitness and social contact is part of mental fitness. We need social contact. And I would say many young people don't have it. They are on Facebook, they are on Instagram, on Snapchat all day. And social media can be very asocial. You see young kids or even the parents, sit across the table and texting each other instead of talking. And that's sad when I see it. And then you see toddlers that get put in front of the cell phone or TV with the fast changing, fast paced screen. And we know that it increases the risk of becoming diagnosed with ADHD by 70% if they have more than half of a screen time before age five. They shouldn't have more than half of a screen time a day. Screen time means good cell phone TV. How many kids get that little screen time? It's hard to find somebody. No wonder it's, it's hard. Then important stress and sleep management. It's important to sleep enough and to manage your stress. I will talk about that. And it's good to learn something new. Whatever you choose. I learned from my mother how to do Sudoku. God love her. She's 89. She does the most challenging challenge of Sudoku. Oh my god, she takes three days to do one Sudoku puzzle sometimes because those are the most Difficult you can get. I'm not there yet. But she told me I'm sister, I'm happy to share. And now I do so though, and I get up to the challenger sometimes. Sometimes. Because I like to be with my husband and talk with him while I do so <laughs> Not not quite undistracted. But learn something new, learn an instrument, learn a new language. Learn something you are interested in. Go to the you have great philosophy classes, good for you. Learn something. Now, avoiding things that hurt your brain. Too much junk food, too much sugar, white flour, bad fats, candy, soda, processed foods. Too much of it will damage your brain. With your obesity, the right way. Don't try to power it doesn't work. Avoid high-risk sports, of course. I mean, even a helmet and the 
will see that when I bring my brain model, even the hammer doesn't prevent you from getting the brain injury when you fall on the air. There are damaging spots, that's not really high risk spots. Those will be damaging. When you hit somebody in the head, he has a brain injury by definition. And when you knock somebody KO, you cause the concussion with his or her implicit agreement. So, now, toxic exposure, if somebody works in heavy fumes, if somebody takes illegal drugs or smokes, that exposes you to a high amount of toxins that the body needs to detox from. We have detoxification organs. Depending on your genetic makeup, they work better or worse. And the breast illness, genetic risk, toxic people, toxic thought, and distress. That's hard to do sometimes. And if you're interested, over time, I can show you how to do all of it. And you saw and then I want to invite you, if you're interested, to listen to my radio show and podcast. It's every Thursday at 12 p.m. on 97.5 FM. It's not easy to hear in, the, in uh, Halifax sometimes because we don't have the bandwidth yet. It's a volunteer organization, but it's great. You can listen live on communityradio.com or you can go to my website and listen to the podcast version. <laughs> and you find it on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, and all major podcast sites. I was told it's pretty good. <laughs> it's on Thursdays at 12 noon. And you can go to my website and listen to the current podcast. It will be released at 12 30. It's on my website, the newest part. All the older ones you can find on my website, or you can find on iTunes. Just Google my name, it's the easiest of everything. So you'll find me. Healthy alternatives. Yes, we talked about gratitude at the season three opener. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's the third year now that I'm doing it, and I'm enjoying very much sharing a little information and sharing a uh, talk with interesting guests. You should listen to Maxine. She was a very interesting guest. Yeah. Oh, yes, really, you were. And I had people there from California. I had people from the States. I had people from Europe. It's a lot of fun. And good. Now, thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure to talk to you a little bit about a little bit of what I can do. And if you have any questions that I didn't answer, comments, let me know and fill out the evaluation forms because I want to get better. Nobody is perfect. I'm far from it. But everybody can get better. I say progress, not perfection. I have a good friend, she's a perfectionist, and I'm trying to get into her. It's progress, not perfection. It's okay to have make mistakes. It's okay to have faults. And last but not least, the flu season is coming up. And I want to invite you to contaminate the earth. Here's with what? With <laughs> smiles. Smiles are contagious. So go forth and contaminate as many people as you can. Thank you.